So in the last tutorial we created all of the folders that belong to our album module. And what we're going to do in this video is just finish off the rest of this page. We're going to do all the rest of the things here. And the next thing that we need to take care of is we need to create this module.php file which is going to sit within our album module. And the purpose of this module.php is all within this class right here. So the module manager is going to call these two methods. And basically the whole purpose of this class, the get autoloader config is essentially a class loader. It's going to let Zen know uh, which classes we have within our module. And then we also have this get config, which is probably going to let Zen know about the configuration of our module. If we scroll down a little bit more here, we'll see a note that if we're using Composer, which we are, that we can add this autoload directive to our composer.json. So if we do this, instead of putting all of this code within get autoloader config, where we're returning an array here, we can actually just put nothing in there. So this is a little bit weird in Zend. I think it would make more sense if, instead of just removing the content of this to remove the method altogether, that seems a little bit cleaner. I'm not sure why we'd have a get autoloader config method with nothing in it if we're using Composer. But we'll just follow uh, all of the things that they say here. So let's start off just by copying all of this right here. And then I'm going to go into my command line and I'm going to go into the module directory. Uh, let's just cd back here and see where we are. So we can see our album module there. Let's cd into that. So what we need to do is we need to create this module.php right here. So I'm just going to type nano module.php. That's going to open up the nano program. And I've actually already pasted it all within here. If you didn't paste it in, you can use uh, command V to paste that in within nano. So because we're using Composer to load in those classes, I'm just going to press control K on all of the lines of returning this array so that we just have nothing within our get autoloader config. And in PHP, if you have a method like this that's being called that returns nothing, it's just going to return null. So I'm going to hit Control X here and then Y to save. So if we take another look at our directory here, we'll see we've created that module.php. Just do a cat to it and we'll see all of that code right there. So let's go back over to the documentation now and find out the next thing that we need to do. So we've done all of this now. We've removed the return array because we're going to use Composer to autoload. So the next thing that we should do is we should copy these lines right here, the autoload, and we're going to use PSR0 to load in all the classes uh, within module, album, src. So let's go over to our text editor now and let's find that composer.json. So that is going to be in the root of our skeleton application. Let's just fold up a few of these that we're not using right now. And we'll see composer.json right here. So right now we don't have an autoload property right here, so let's just add that in at the bottom. Autoload, and I'll just indent this a little bit. So we're going to use PSR0, and what, what it's being passed is an object, and the uh, property name is album, and the value is module, album, src. You've got to be really careful with adding things um, within a JSON file. If you have an extra comma like I have right here, that is going to throw an error. If you had an extra comma here, that would also cause an error. So just make sure you don't have any trailing commas. So let's go back over to the site now and find out the next thing we need to do. We'll see that we need to run a PHP composer.far update. If you saw my first video when we downloaded composer.far, we renamed it to composer and then moved it to our path so it's going to be called. So if composer update doesn't work for you and you still have your composer.far file in there, you can run this php composer.far space update. So we've got that paste in there so we can now do a composer update. However, before we do the composer update, I want to show you what is actually happening when you do a composer update. I think this is kind of magical for a lot of people, but I'm going to let you know exactly what happens right now. So within our skeleton folder, we also have a vendor folder. This is where we're going to store all of our dependencies for the application. So if we look within the vendor folder, we'll see this composer folder right here. And when we run that composer update, what it's going to do is it's going to make some changes to a few files right here. And I've actually opened up a bunch of these files right here. We don't need to open up autoload PSR4 because we know we're using PSR0. And it's good to open these up and get a sense of what's in them. In our case, when we're doing this composer update right here, the only classes that could possibly be updated 
is this autoload namespaces and also the autoload class map. So depending what you're doing within your composer.json, uh, one of these might be changed, but let's just open up both of them right now uh, just so we can get a sense of what's in them. We see the autoload class map has nothing in it right now and within the autoload namespaces we have two elements in our array right now. So let's go over to the command line now and run composer update. I'm just going to go back uh, within my root directory. We'll take a look at that. So you want to run composer update from where your composer.json is located. So I'll just type composer update right here. That's going to load the composer repositories. Sometimes this is a little bit slow, so you might need to wait a couple minutes for it. So we'll see that this is finished right now, and it gave me this feedback, nothing to install or update. That's because within our dependencies for this end, uh, we didn't have anything to install or update. There was no outdated dependencies. However, the next line we'll see generated autoload files. So if we go back over to our Sublime text here, you'll see that a new line has been added to autoload namespaces.php. So when we're returning an array here, we have a new element which is called album. And within that we have an array, the, the base directory, slash module, slash album, slash src. So we're just going to start looking for classes within this folder now. If we take a look at the autoload class map.php, we'll see there's no changes here. So we know that when we go in our composer JSON and we do this PSR0 autoloading, what that's going to do is it's going to add uh, the necessary lines within your autoload namespaces.php. So let's go back to the site now and let's finish off the rest of this. The last thing we need to do is let the application know about our new module. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go into config slash application.config.php. So this is no longer within our module, this is within our main application. We're going to go into the config folder and what we're going to do is add this album index to our uh, modules array here. So let's go over to the code editor to take care of that. So uh, within my skeleton folder, I'll open up the config folder, and then open up application.config.php. And within this modules array, we'll just add a new line right here, which is album. So I think that's actually completely done now, and we have finished everything for this tutorial. Uh, let's see what we're going to do in the next one. We are going to look at routing and controllers. Let's just take a quick look at this. And I guess we're going to be doing the routing in the next video. So I'll see you then.